You're about to be drenched with the rain of the word. You're about to experience supernatural emancipation and power detonation. A soul watch with Evangelist Isaac Emmanuel. You carry me when some carry their uh, For prayers and counseling, call 070-61-990-110. Soul watch with Evangelist Isaac Emmanuel. Isaac Emmanuel. Listen and be blessed. You know there's me at the making process and I told you from the uh, Genesis the study in the book of Genesis we saw that God created things and God made man because the Hebrew word that suggests creating and making is bara and asa and uh, these two words are coming from different angles I told you yesterday that you do not make cheer oh sorry you do not create cheer the carpenter or the furniture man that makes uh, furniture does not create he only makes you do not create out of something you make from what is created you make things then when you talk about creating it means out of nothing you are forming something so and uh, yesterday I explained to you that when God began the journey of creation, he spoke everything into reality 
and he got to the turn when God had problem through the studies in the book of Genesis we saw for the first time that God had problem and that problem was he needed a manager God created everything for his pleasure including man but he made man because he needed a manager man is a product uh, of need then I told you that the intercourse that happened between the Trinity the father consulting the father the son and the spirit and there was an intercourse and the projection or the seed that came out of that Conanian was man so if somebody asks you how do you believe in Trinity I need a picture to show that Trinity is real the picture of Trinity is man if a man if anybody is looking for I need something to look to look how God looks like man is the picture of God in the midst of creation because come let us make man in our own image time will fail me to talk about the father component the son component and the spirit component in man because I, I, I want to major on that making because the greatest need of our generation is making and I want to say this with all sense of humility and sincerity we live in a generation of many voices so you go to social media you hear voices you go to different places you hear voices if the faith you are practicing at this day is predicated on the messages you hear on social media it means that you are not yet solidified as a christian you will end halfway because the darkness that is coming is thicker than what you're consuming so we need a solid forming so that the day will come our goal sir our goal is not to answer the greatest man of god our goal is to make a contribution so that when darkness come you'll be able to remember some of the things that we've told you and you'll know what to do because the goal of a man in what he communicates is what he achieves so if we want to thrill you and get you dancing and get you shouting get you raise your legs seven times and believe that that is all encounter that you could receive from the father we've deceived you because the sadness that is awaiting our generation is thicker than what you received this is more than psychophant it's not it's not it's not what if the day your joy will fail how will you stand so now there is that which god wants to make so and i told you that the making when god comes to making of man there are three dimensions one the making of adam we saw yesterday that god made adam adam became a man in one day so on the day that the enemy of his father satan came adam could not stand because he was a man in body and a child in mind so the stature we are raising in this kingdom is not people that are physically bold alone you might look like a 12 years old boy or be like timothy at the age of 14 yet they could look at you and call you a bishop because the stature the fleshly muscle a man possesses does not trigger demons what trigger demons is the content of god in you how much of god you emit each time you talk are you following what i'm saying here so i am just doing a recap of what we talked what we said yesterday so that we, I, I i tell you what i want to tell you today now we saw that the first making is the making of adam where it is the will of god that you rise in all sense so the making of adam is the making of the seeing seeable or physical things palpable things that is to say when a man grows to the age of being a graduate he becomes a graduate when a man grows to the age of getting married god expects that you get married when a man gets to the age of becoming whatever he wishes to be god becomes so and i showed you yesterday that the clothes that god wears into various fields of industry is man for instance you woke up this morning and you went to your wardrobe to look at what to wear you started the zraying clothes so it is according to the book of psalm that the eyes of the lord runs through and fro on earth looking upon the affairs of men so god wants to possess the music industry he is looking for a cloth called man to wear. He comes to the family of Emmanuel and found a child called Isaac. They bond him and the boy wanted to be made probably a lawyer or probably a philosopher. But there was a change of program in the hand of the maker who is called the potter. He met him and said, I want to wear you as my cloth. Because the cloth that God wears among beings is man. So he says, I want to wear you 
all of a sudden you saw that you can sing all of a sudden you saw that people are liking what you sing all of a sudden you saw that your songs are making waves if you are not lectured enough you will think you are a celebrity the difference between ministers and celebrity is that we are covenanted people and we are bringing the oaths of God celebrities can live their life the way you wish they wish that's the reason this these are the mindset that the music ministers of our generation have not understood so that is the reason why they can build you they were not too taught that is the reason why you need to hear what I want to tell you because we are going to discuss the test of Abraham Abraham raised three altars in Canaan significant journey and Abraham had three major tests in Canaan that proved because we've talked about yesterday the number one the making of Adam that is the you that has be, that you've become now the second making process is the making of a nation that is the one we want to talk now how did God process a nation out of an individual do God still carry out such enterprise in our generation these are some of the things that should be bugging our heart not that somebody will come to Sunday service we bring a lecturer to come and teach cryptocurrency where there are heavier matters to discuss in the kingdom Asaba is drowning in immorality including myself and all the ministers who are watching this is the city we are laboring over and again and again and the Lord said I want to do something with you in Asaba yet a court called Okite is manifesting I keep asking myself is it that we are joking or that we are all serious and the same people that are coming to our churches are the men that are getting initiated into the court what is it that we are teaching them that they lack stamina because there are three major men that men stand in the spirit one is speed the other one stamina the other one is energy we teach them speed we don't teach them how to convert energy and we don't teach them stamina so the guy can run but wind can carry him we need to understand we need to think because there is a requirement there is a ruling from the thrones of the immortals saying who will raise me man who will raise me man so that we can teach our generation that men are not measured by what they wear if the stature of prophets by, by, by were by their garments then john the baptist shouldn't have wear the spirit of elijah sir you can wear a beautiful coat and there is nothing resting on you but you can find a naked man yet he tells you that it will rain all through tomorrow and so shall it be we are striving over nothing yet god wants to make a nation let's start our journey this morning the making of a nation starts with the making of a man when God finds an individual the first thing I told you yesterday that will happen to that individual is that he will find his bearing in life he will find purpose he will know that the essence of life is not to accumulate the essence of life is to distribute so he will find and discover that the life that was given to him was not given so that he can answer the greatest of all time so that he can answer the greatest preacher so that he can answer the greatest prophet oh no that is not the thing that matters we are still alive and we are preaching every day if i show you my calendar from now to march you will shout yet i am making no impact dead men their book are making more impact than me that is living and it's not giving you concern so we want to wake up in the morning and cheer the people somebody shout amen seven times and somebody will shout and after shouting he leaves you and finds out that he's still a bear he's still a child adam was a, a son in body but he was a child in mind so he couldn't negotiate with the enemy of his father because the bible speaking in the book of psalm chapter 20 127 it says that sons are given they are the one children are the one that discuss with the enemy at the gate so the enemy of God came to the garden of God at the gate where he met Adam. He met a child in mind, but a man in body. So he was telling, is it true that your father God said? Because the greatest problem of every generation is twisted scriptures. So only children do not know it. But men that have grown in stature in all sense knows when you twist scripture. They say, this is not the way my father said it. They know what God said. 
Mais nous, on concert. Amen. 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 The making of nation. Let's start our journey with the book of Genesis, chapter 12, from verses 1. Oh my God. Oh my God. Genesis. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. Okay, that's right. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. We, we have to continue. Yes, go ahead. Unto a land that I will show thee. Say, and thou will make. That is where the Spirit of the Lord started talking to me about making men. That is number one. Remember that yesterday when we studied the book of Jeremiah chapter 18 from verses 1, we saw that the portal was making a clear now the bible was specific can you go there Gen jeremiah chapter 18 from verses uh, one the bible now from verse two now the bible now said that the portal was making a clear and uh, the clear was mad that is the clear damaged in the hand of the potter the clear damaged in the hand of the potter go to verse four and uh, immediately he said, and the vessel that he made was clear, of clear, was mad, that is damaged in the hand of the potters. So he made it again. He made it again. The essence of this camp is maybe something has been damaged, then we'll make it again. So now let's go back to that Genesis chapter 12. Now the Bible now said, when Abraham started his journey, the first thing that was told him was, leave thy country. I want to make a nation out of you. I gave you a Zegesis, uh, expanded the Genesis yesterday about what God told Abraham and how Noah raised Abraham. I hope you know, you remember, I told you that Abraham lived with Noah for 39 years before Noah died. You remember that? Say amen. Yes. So you need to go and get those materials and study for yourself so that it doesn't look like I am telling you some things that is not founded and these things that are scriptural predicated the book of Joshua is described by the scriptures so go and get it and read so that you'll find extra information now you now see that when God called Abraham the first thing he told him was I will make thee I will make thee that is I will put you on the wheels where I make men and I will turn you as much as I want as fast as I want as slow as I want until I process something out of you there is a race I am looking to produce and that race will be called a nation I cannot I will not achieve it I told you yesterday that that pro that program started with Noah God cleared the first earth with flood. What he wanted to achieve was a new nation. Yet, the Sunday that Noah was supposed to come for thanksgiving for surviving the flood, the day was the day Pastor Noah got drunk. God was saying, what will I do to sin? So God saw that sin is a blood thing. He started a process. He started with Noah and there was no fulfillment in it. Now he came to Abraham. And when he came to Abraham and uh, started with Abraham, the first thing he saw that he has to do to Abraham is to isolate him, to take him among, out of his brethren. And when he took him out of his brethren, the next thing he did was to bring him to a land. And that land is the land of Cana. You see, we have not, the church has not sat down to read deeply the mysteries of Cana. We've not. So when Abraham left his father's house, he landed at uh, Haram. After the whole thing, he had to carry his wife, carry Lord, carry the souls he has won, and moved again. The fine, final place he found himself was Canaan. And three places he visited in Canaan very strategic in the work of any individual listen to me if god wants to make you a king or god wants to raise you as a voice in your lineage or wherever you belong there is a school that the lord will enroll you in now if god wants to raise a prototype of you even when you are gone that people will look at you and say this guy have stayed with christ there is some things he will do with you it is called making 
said to Abraham, I will make you. That is the making of the nation. Even when Jesus started calling the apostles, which is the third class of making, which we might not discuss in this camp meeting, the first thing he tells anybody he finds is, follow me and I will make you. We've not sat down to think about it. So we just received the call. For instance, we've seen ministers, men are glad of the giftings of God. But sir, if God gives you gifts without processing you, you will end up being an enemy of God. I don't want to start giving you examples. Because that was what nearly happened to brother Moses. If not for the covenant of intercession, Moses would have lost it. God is showing every believer, God is showing every Christian, every pastor, an example that you can lead a multitude out of bondage and yourself. You will not get to the promised land. That was what Paul saw and said in the book of First Corinthians chapter 9 and 27 that I'm putting my body under subjection not after preaching to others I become a castaway the deception is that you are speaking in tongues and the sick is getting you you are praying your services are getting packed crowd are attending your meeting people are interested in your message you think that he's still there you know that he's gone This kind of love I've never seen This kind of love No man can give This kind of love I've never seen This kind of love No man can give And love And love you Shakatala Baladi you remain the same. Ah, and I will go. I don't know what I'm most of God in that. And I will go. And I will go. You remain the same. Ah, and I will go. I don't know what I'm most of God in that. In the making of Abraham, God caused Abraham to visit three places to prove his act. When God wanted to make a nation out of Abraham, he did three major works. Number one, he separated Abraham. Number two, he revealed dimensions of himself through his names. Mm. He revealed himself through his names. The third thing he did was that he stood as a covenant keeping God. But before those dimensions started manifesting, a journey had to start. Abraham left Haram. The first place he found himself was at Shechem. And when he arrived in that place, he had to understand the principles of joining with a deity. He raised an altar. What is the interpretation of Shechem? Shechem, so many translations, one gave it as a shoulder. And you know that the shoulder is the most strong place in the body. The shoulder can carry what the hand cannot carry. Some of the times, the shoulder can carry what the head cannot carry. Now, when he got to Shechem, he raised an altar. The place of strength. If the Lord will make nation out of an individual the first thing he will learn is the strength that he meets out of covenant with God because on your journey with God 
you will exhaust everything you think you know you will exhaust it and it will become clear that what is carrying you is not the energy of your academies it's not the energy of your fasting I won't stop talking about my encounter with our Father in God, Pa Asiyoko. When we asked him, what do you think of all the things that the Lord has done with you? He summarized it that he found out that the greatest scripture that the Lord gave to him is that book of uh, Matthew chapter 28. Lo, I am with you always. So he started emphasizing it not on the day you fast alone not on the day you are holy not on the day you give offering not on the day you you think you are studying and all the rest of them even on the day of your weakness i will prove myself as strong why do you have to go to shechem to encounter the raw strength of god because that is where god will introduce himself as the god of might and it is because of the Shechem encounter that God does not use strong men. God chooses weak men so that his strength can find expression in them. So a man wakes up in the morning and says, The Lord will use me because I've been a virgin all through my life. You go to hell and find virgins. God will use me because I am the one that has been on dry fasting for 40 years. Nobody has done it. You are joking. Any day you keep relying on these things that you call your own self strength, one of the things that will happen to you is that pride will enter. Arrogance. You will come in the community of believers and you will be condescending on the people, thinking you are the only righteous one. That was what nearly finished the life of Elijah. Lord, you know that these people have killed all your prophets. I am the only one left. God said, calm down. I have 7,000 in this city. And I'm not talking of it's in this city that have not kissed Baal. What is the ritual? What is the book? Yeni ne were ne no wai o si na ke Yeni ne were ne no wai o si na ke Were mo were mo were mo were mo judged righteous on his self practices but he would judge him righteous because he believes in him that is the reason why when God wants to move a nation out of an individual the Lord does not just look on what men look at if God was looking at what men look at Moses shouldn't have been the one that would be a savior to Israelites and Abraham shouldn't have been the one that will be the one that will be called the father of all nations. It should have started from Isaac. I hope you know that Abraham was not just a man that lived and saw God. He was an individual that had flaws. So the first thing that God did was take him to Shechem. Let him rely on the energy that comes from him, not the one that comes from Abraham. If not, 
if Abraham had continued on the self energy after Sarah introduced uh, Hagar to him and he got him pregnant, God would have told him, You have aborted the mission. Let me look for another man. Because in the journey where we are going, we must learn to rely on the strength of the Father. The second place that God took Abraham is called Bethel. This is where we are missing it as a people. Let's see the book of Genesis. Show us Genesis chapter 12, verse 8, verse 18. Sorry, or take us to 8, verse 12, verse 8. Let's see. He said, And he moved from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having, ha having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. After he left Shechem, he has learned that strength to serve God is not because you are strong. It's because he furnished you with strength. So he now went to becoming a place called Bethel, which is translated the house of God. The kingdom we are building, we must learn the technology of the spirit what god wants to build is not a monument as you can see here if you look at this structure right now let me put up an example with this hall you will look at you see there are places they use glass because there's a space there there's another place they see door it is not cement and block that framed this house in totality And it's not one block that you see that made this house. When the engineer was building this place, he was picking blocks in pieces and fixing them into spaces according to their sizes. There were some that were molded nine inches or probably seven or six inches. The engineer, because of the space where he wants to put the block, will have to break it and fix it there. That is to say, in the kingdom that God is building he will fix men according to their sizes the size a man possesses in the kingdom is determined by the, by the space he wants to occupy that is to say if what God wants to do let's call this house the kingdom of God that God wants to build the kingdom that God is building, the block that makes the building, amen. Not cement and sound. So that's the reason why he goes out there and called one and gives him the gifts of prophecy. Called the other one, gives him the gift of singing. Called the other one, made him a slow teacher. So that when you hear him, you will understand at the end of the day, he has a well framed house now look at where we're missing it the lord wants to build a kingdom i am that kingdom i want to be the block i want to be the window i want to be the door i want to be the sink i want to be everything as this building is standing you might not see nail physically pinched anywhere here but no matter how powerful cement and sound is minus nail this house will lack roofing so there are people in the church they might not be powerful preachers they might not even be teachers they might not even be in the choir there might not be some the school teachers. They might be nailed. Their work is too important, but they are not always noticed. And one of the things that happens to them is that they come in small sizes. So take away nail from this building. You have a standing block 
without a roof and minus nail check the lintel of this house the plank they applied what hair did was nail so that they can pour cement I am taking you to Bethel so that you learn the technology of building what is called the house of God the house that God will inhabit might not be this house that you're seeing here but this is a framework to have a picture of what God wants to build so the Lord have looked at that we will need ventilation he made some people window so that breeze can come in from there and the people will not suffocate so you ask block and you look at window you said you are not part of this kingdom that is the reason why the greatest people I will never wish to work with are people that think that if you are not in their team you are not going to heaven for instance you are not a member of so what then I think you are not going to heaven I am deceiving myself and deceiving the people around me somebody is not a member of your church you judge them that they are going to hell that is not the kingdom he wants to build so when you go to Bethel the first thing that will happen to you is to learn the methodologies of God in building and when God teaches you that he will now show you your space you will now know whether you are a block or you are a cement or that you are a whatever you might be there are those that will be the zinc they will be the one taking the pressure from the rain and the sun and the pastors are the ones there so a pastor wakes up in the morning probably a minister one thing said the whole church is corrupt one man makes mistake they say the whole church is bad because there are the people there taking the pressures and when you come into buildings if they begin to naked this building remove the cement remove the plastering you will see that from space to space you will see a pillar that they made some of you will have to be pillars the house of God he made a covenant to serve according to his calling in the house of God the top place he visited before we start talking about the trials and I'll summarize is God took him to Hebron these are the places that God will take men if he wants to make a nation out of you and I've said it again and again this generation of this generation that we're living in we are so careless about discipleship one of the things that bettered what we are doing is to, uh, we normally gather some young men in my house so we pray 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 stretch study the word of God sometimes for 12 hours and all the rest of them until one one day on praying summarizing my fast the lord said okay go seven days seven weeks more we went at the end of the day it was one instruction expand this thing you're doing a little open it up a little our goal was not to be anything we wanted to be a movement of people that loves god and stick with god and chase god and find god can i ask you a question who are you discipling we have a problem because we have not learned the method of God in using men so we want to be like every other person you know T.L. Lord's born you know what's the name of the other man there were three powerful evangelists, including Kenneth Hagen, who was a teacher. Joe Lobstone was packing stadiums. He would do crusades, people would fool everywhere. He would do that. 
The other one would do healing crusade everywhere, crowd and all the rest of them. In the midst of that, and Kenneth Hagin was sitting in his house, studying his Bible, teaching few congregations. We talk about the crusades that T.L. Osborne and uh, Ora Robert and some other people have done. But what we talk about, every pastor today is quoting Kenneth Hagin. He's an authority in the system. Part of what you will learn at Bethel is to stick to your calling. You're not moved by this one is this. You're not moved. So when he got to Hebron, and Hebron is the place of fellowship. Intimacy. Two categories of fellowship that we must know about. Number one, the fellowship with the Father. That is God himself, either the Son, the Holy Spirit, the fellowship with God himself. The second kind of fellowship is the fellowship with our fellow human beings. If you be at peace with God and be in enmity with your neighbor, you are not at peace with God. Recently, there's a man we, we all know on social media. The ministry of that man is to attack pastors. And this is a man that wrote a book that shifted my heart. What is the wonder that a man left Nigeria and went to the shores of Europe and caused a, a tsunami of revival in Ukraine? And all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. That is the reason why we prayed yesterday, Lord, keep me away from corruption. Because a man can be in the faith, he will not know that he has left he has gone out of the umbrella so because he's still wearing uniform as a military man he would think that he's still in the assignment how could it be that you are the only genuine pastor every other person is fake you raised about 10, 23 000 to 30 000 members in europe we didn't call you fake and we didn't tell people that you're using the chromatic powers then all of a sudden there was there was a clap down in what you're doing. You came down for you to find back your feet again is to attack everybody. Now, no pastor is talking about that book again, Church Shift. I don't call anybody's name. Okay, we moved away from that one. Another one, a man who should have been a towering ego. All of a sudden, he now said this hyper grace that is his message. Everybody that is not in their clique is fake. Occultic. That's what they call them. There's no shadow you won't lie up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lights you won't tear down. Coming after me. Fellowship with one another. There is a question that Canon asked. I've, I've, I've talked about it all the time. You know, we're talking one day. You asked, What is the problem with the hand of Gehazi? How 
come that the staff mantle that walked in the hand of Elisha could not walk in the hand of Gehazi. You preached, you preached a lifetime message to me the day we had that discussion. Because the fellowship we are having is founded on bitterness. You know, there's a problem with our generation. We are blinded to so many things. A prostitute will walk from that western door and enter here and receive a counter. A brother who has been on mountain for almost three weeks now will walk in here and nothing will happen. You know why? Because he is fellowshipping in error. We are trusting to sing down the glory of God. Even you come among the choir. A sister will want to come and lead song. The instrumentalist will play nonsense. Because they have a riff with her. But when they, the one that is giving them rice and plantain comes. Ah, you would think that the Holy Ghost has descended. Because talent and anointing look alike. A talented man will be talking you think he's anointed you might mistake gifts for anointed they look alike so the fellowship that God wants God wants us to relate not in competition but that we commend one another Paul speaking the other day said they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise So a man wakes up in the morning, say, what is he doing that I cannot do? In as much as we don't compare ourselves, but wisdom should always also teach you that in as much as we are fellowshipping, let us also learn that some of the times in the body there is such thing as called the head. Does that mean that the hand is not important? No. The head has five major things that makes the body. There are five sense organs. It is in the wisdom of God that he put four on the head and left one in the entire body. So we have to come and know that we don't compare ourselves. The brother is doing something, commend him. The sister is rising, commend him. Let me summarize with this the trials of Abraham. Three types of it are mentioned, then we'll bring our fathers and the Lord to do the bidding. There are three major trials that God gave to Abraham because he wants to make a nation out of him. And that is what God will give to every individual that must stand the taste of raising disciples for Jesus in these last days. Please show us in the scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12 verse 10. Let's start from there. Before I spoke a word, You've been speaking to me. You've been so, so kind to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed that life in me. Ah. You've been so, so kind to me.
And there was a famine in the land. And Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. <laughs> you want to raise men for God? You want to leave a legacy that when you are gone, there are people that will wear that shoe and continue where you stopped. This is the first test. The test of hunger. The test of hunger. There's no shadow you will learn. Mountain you will climb up. Coming, Coming after, after me. me. There's no one you will take down. Lies you will tear down. Coming up. The test of hunger. Lord, I want to raise people for you. I want to raise a breed that will know no corruption. Say, aha, I'm interested. My greatest pursuit in the means of creation is man. I want to do business with you. But please, you have to pass through the processes that I've laid down. After you have learned covenant, you've had covenant with God that you will never fornicate, that you will never lie, that you will never do this and do that. He said, don't worry, I don't have a problem with that. Because the ministers of our times have taught us that fornication is the uh, most worst sin. Who told you? Adultery is the worst sin. Who told you? They are as terrible as every other sin too. But the Bible called it the sin against your own body. I want to take you to a place where I can boast about you. You know, in our generation, we have, look at what the name my father gave me, Emmanuel, my senior brother, he gave him wisdom. So, you come, you see a pack of beautiful names. Since I was born, I've never seen anybody call his son Job. Now, so zealous for God. I went to the newspaper and told them my name is not Isaac, my name is Job. Milk is for children. Solid meat is for men. So the, the kind of messages will preach nice. Once you come to Jesus, everything will be okay. So the guy came to Jesus, followed for three years, nothing happened. He said that church is calm. Because we didn't teach them from base one that if god wants to do a thing with you he's not going to use you wrong i told you yesterday he has to process you the number one process of a man that will raise a breed for god is that he will test your heart of hunger he will test you with hunger you don't know the you don't know how dangerous hunger is hunger was the only thing that moved Abraham out of his place of assignment and sent him to Egypt. The same thing is happening to ministers today. Happening to believers. Abraham, his place of assignment is Canaan. But because there was famine, there was famine, the man left. He was dispossessed of his, possession, of his assignment place and went into Egypt. When he arrived in Egypt, he got the Bible said when he got to the boundary of Egypt, he called his wife. You know you are a beautiful woman. These people will kill me because of you. Started rehearsing lies. Let us not lie. You remember we are related. Just tell them you are my sister. And the question was not, is this your relative? The question, is this your wife? How can I ask you, is this your wife? And you answer, is my sister. And a preacher who thinks he's too zealous will say he was not lying. So, the first test of hunger, the first test that the Lord will give to anybody that must raise some people for him in this generation that will travel with what he wants to do, is he will test you of hunger. There is where that will be lack. 
customers are not forthcoming. Invitations to come and preach or minister is not forthcoming. Business is crumbling. Nothing is working. He wants to see if really you are following or you are not following. I am not speaking to you like a novice. I'm speaking to you like a man who has traveled this path. My scars and my testimonies. In the midst of a terrible hungry season. Orchestrated by the Lord himself. Real estate business is not working. Ministry nothing is working. And all the rest of them. Yet you want to maintain the stature of integrity. And you've started preaching to people that the only bailout to what Jesus is doing is to believe him holistically. Hold on to what he has said. You, you started a message of moving men from you because if you begin to put the faith of people on you, you'll be a rich pastor. Oh my God. We are everybody that encounters you. Somebody will have to call you, sir. Check the, check the road. I want to fly Abuja, Lagos now. Check if the weather is clear. And I'm wondering when the pastor became aviation officer. Ah! And God is saying, I am... She, you say, you want to... Say yes. Let, let us see. That morning where I was grumbling in terrible faint have you started fasting because there's no food in your house to eat you say since there's no food staying like that will be a waste started on plant fasting when it will end you don't know have you been there in the midst of that hungry fast a woman calls hello evangelist good morning sir i had a terrible dream this morning i was in the dream they were putting me in the coffin planning to take me to the grave my enemies are after me how many cows will it take to avert this thing <laughs> oh and i would i was still for 20 seconds huh? the, the woman said are you there i said i'm here did, did you hear what i said one cow a good cow is about 300 and something thousand and somebody is asking you how many cow can avert it and i know the woman too very well she can afford 10 cows in, in the midst of that terrible hunger And I had a whisper in my spirit. Say, you are in an exam hall. What you write now, they will mark for you. I answered back, hey, Loma. He said you were in the dream. They were putting you in the gasket. He said yes. And you want to do sacrifice? He said yes. Okay. Did you pray when you woke up? He said, I pray all through the night. If you have prayed, you have cancelled it. She said, I don't understand what you're saying, sir. I want to do sacrifice. He said, Don't worry, you have cancelled it. Hunger has ruined men. Hunger has made the first to be the last. One given a birthright. License to greatness. He came back famished. Said to his brother, give me that porridge and take this nonsense. If you are nowhere taught, you will sell your birthright for a plate of rice. 
So, many people will eat their glory in the name of seed today. And when they will get to their platform of testimony, they will lack harvest. There is a mystery I saw in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, speaking from verses 10 and 11. The Bible says, the word, my word that comes, he said, it will not return to me void. Now look at, is my word not, he said, as the rain comes from on high to water the land, to make it fetter, to produce food for the eater and seed for the sower. Two people I saw in that place. There is one who is a consumer, the other one. Is a planter. So the Lord now opened my eyes. Why so many people lack harvest in the journey with the Lord is because they ate their seed that they should have planted. They've taught you that the kind of seed they only to plant is when you bring offering to the altar and give. It could be it, but that's not the height of it. The day you had the opportunity to manipulate people and you heard yourself. That was the day you saw the seed of God trusting you. I was listening to Uncle Mile Akane and he said that he was going to programs and miracles was happening and things was happening. He, he, he started assuming that God is using him. So one day he came back from a very great crusade and the Lord told him I'm beginning to think to use you. Hunger. You will be tested. You are praying for people and miracles are happening in the crusades. Mighty things are happening in the businesses. Yet, you cannot afford your child's school fees. Every day that child comes back, he says, Mommy, I'm the only one there in this embarrassing in the school. Every day they will come out in the assembly and say, Tell your mother to come and pay. Yeah, this is a woman that was on the mountain and spoke over here, an importer. And doors opened. The guy did everything. After he was done, he forgot the woman. Any day he has a bad dream, he will remember the woman again. Calm down, sir. It is not you that causes men to forget you. It is not you that causes men to remember you. The Bible was speaking. A scripture... Listen, when you go through hunger, that's when you go and study and see that men went through hunger and that followed God. Malachi chapter 3, from verses 13, the Bible said, Now those that believe in God began to complain that it is come to serve God. How is it that we are following Him in the fear? Yet, those that are wicked, that do, has no respect for the Lord, they are prospering. We that are calling on the name of the Lord, nothing is working. Is in us come? The Bible said immediately the Lord had them, and a book of remembrance was opened. Don't be deceived. You have the ability to make records of things that will be in that book, but you have no capacity to open your chapter to be read. There is one that has the book. Hunger. Esau sold his birthright for hunger. Hunger moved Abraham from his place of assignment to the place where he had to lie to eat. Hunger. Yeah. Oh. 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 The second test that God gave Abraham is found in Genesis 13 verse 5 to seven and it's the test of material things the test of material things hmm. this is where the value of a man is measured what are things that are of value to you And Lot also which went with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents. Uh-huh. The seas, please. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. Uh-huh. The seven. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the uh, uh, Hestmen of 
lost cattle and the Canaanites and the Perizzites do it then in the land yes verse 8 now and Abraham said unto Lot let there be no strife I pray thee between me and thee and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen for we be brethren uh-huh is not the whole is not the whole land before thee separate thyself I pray thee from me if thou wilt take the left then I will go to the right or if thou depart to the right hand then I will go to the left this is where it started the first thing that happened was Abraham had to understand that stage in life is not determined by age he called his brother because there is something we are doing more than these material things where do you want to go make a choice go to the left or I'll go to the right whichever one you want to go I'll go he should have been the elder and say I senior you let me go let me take first but he said no take materialism you were brooding over every darkness you were causing light to shine from darkness you were brooding over every time you are causing light to shine from darkness oh things God tested his heart Lord choose what he will call the most greener part of the land it is at this second test that God is teaching us to avoid competition unhealthy competition unnecessary dragging I am of Paul, I am of Barnabas, this, that. They won't do this, they won't do that. Material things. Any day physical things that you see takes you out of your place of assignment. Your death or your end will be disastrous. I've always told you the story here in our fellowship about a brother who became a priest in England. And uh, he was serving in the palace. But the man abandoned his duty as a priest and started serving the king. One day he fought the laws of the land and they brought him before the king and they think the king judged him and condemned him to die by hanging. When they asked him, what do you have to say before you die? He said, if only I had served God the way I served the king, I wouldn't die by now. Material things. Does it mean it's not necessary? It is necessary. They are not the basics through which who we are is defined. Does that mean we should appear shabby and unguided? No. Jesus was speaking to them. He said in the book of Matthew, have it on the scriptures, uh, on the screen, please. Matthew chapter 6. He was talking to them. Oh, Father, you're welcome, sir. Now, he was talking to them and he said that Matthew chapter 6, please go there. Take us from 
get that verse where Jesus was saying, he said, do not pursue these things like the beggar do. That is, a, an unbeliever can lie to make money. An unbeliever can kill to make money. An unbeliever can betray somebody to make money. The story of a girl I had that is doing hookup in Asaba here took his friend to go and give somebody. The friend did not know that the girl had sold her for two million naira. So she has collected money. You know the way they do hookup. I have a man for you. So he took the girl to the hotel. When they entered the hotel, he told the girl, okay, I'm coming. So the girl stayed with the guys. That was the end of the girl here in Asaba. That was why when we were praying in the morning, we were we were repenting on behalf of those things because part of the cleansing that happens in a land is if they shed blood in a Sabbath, an innocent blood according to the book of numbers it affects everybody in that land until a, an atonement is made but thank god for the blood of jesus so an atonement is not to go and look for who to kill now the atonement is to release the blood of jesus upon the land and the land will be settled again So that girl betrayed her friend and sold her for two million euro. You saw the video of that girl in Leki that slept with a dog and she was proud to come to internet to say, what is wrong? Well, have, you, have you seen one million two before? So in the, in the definition of life to her, dog is a companion, sexual companion. Because there are three types of life. There is the bios, there is, there is the zuke, and there is the zoe. Bios is gotten from the study of living things. That is biology, studies of living things. The one you inhale oxygen and exhale, uh, what's it called, carbon dioxide. You are in transaction with trees. Animal has that kind of life. The commonest life that you see is the one that functions in blood. So, animal lives by blood. That's the reason why in the book of Genesis chapter 9 they say, do not eat the animal with the blood because the life is in the blood. Okay, now he went ahead. So because that girl is functioning on the blood level kind of life, sleeping with a dog makes no problem for her. And she didn't look at the terrible wickedness that is happening in her company now. So those big men in Lake we get dog, boo dog, and pay a girl one million to and sit down to watch the dog says the girl without condom so that girl was able to take such an such be still activity i still came to social media i said what is wrong have you seen one million two before so in her head one million two could buy her the essence of this boring teaching you hear us doing. If I want to preach, nobody should be sitting down. You should be shouting and jumping until I'm done. But I've seen that in the midst of that eloquent display, what they keep telling is that guy can preach. I wasn't making anything out of people. But we saw that what we need in this generation is teaching priests, teaching pastors, teaching ministers, people that will sit down and break the word so that we understand it. So that you know the value of things, the value of life. What will a man give in a stage of his own soul? So they tell you that there's something you will do. You will make riches at once. You will wait. What is this thing to my life? I've always told you the story of a man who went to do ritual because he think that he has suffered a lot. He got there. They told him it's the mother that you kill. And this guy is an only child. He killed the mother. They told him, bury your mother in the space of two weeks. He buried. After two weeks of the burial, they told him to excavate the mother and cut off the head. He excavated the corpse of the mother and cut off the head. And went to bury it in his bedroom. After all these terrible activities, he didn't make money. Preaching on Bridge Friend one day, a boy was on his way to Abo. Early in the morning, around six, when we preach, so he was on his way to Abo. We didn't even know. 
So my phone was ringing, 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 ringing. Yeah, according to him, when he came to see us, he has gone the first one. He, they did something for him and told him to go and get the mother's rapper. So that they would summarize the ritual. The mother would die and he would make money. So on that morning, he was going to our boy. He had me preaching on the radio. He alighted the bus. That is the reason why I am not regretting the kind of messages I'm preaching now. Imagine I was preaching, you will prosper. You will succeed in that place you're going. You will make it. Nothing will stop you. I speak to you as a prophet. You will. The guy will sail successfully on that journey. He alighted the bus, called us, came that he was on his way to go and complete the ritual so that the mother would die and he would make money. But he had us preaching. He's not doing that again. Material things. And the worst is when your parents are the ones giving you pressure. Look at your mate. They are comparing you. Is it not your mate that is building that house? We might be classmates or age mate, but that doesn't mean we'll be grace mate. I don't think that the people that are that has Mercedes 230 now should be telling us they has a, they have a good car. Somebody that has 190 now, they want to ask people that has car. Even if we make announcement, uh, who has? Uh, Mercedes 190, so so please come and repack. You will sit for 10 minutes after the announcement before you quietly walk out because you know it's no more in vogue. But these were the cars that people killed people for to carry. G Wagon today, Mercedes Formatic, that our boys were seeing in Asaba. You're seeing them, don't pretend like you're not seeing them. They are getting them forth, doing terrible things, butchering people to get. Give them five years from now. Formatic will not be invoked. So, sir, somebody is building a house you've not built. Calm down. When you will build your own, the most beautiful house in your, in your community in 1940s and 1980s, is it the best house now? Please answer me, please. Is it the best house? There are mothers. If you kill to build, a time will come, what you killed for will fizzle away. And you discover that you wasted life. You wasted it. The test of materialism. The Lord is putting it to the church. And oh, I'm very sorry because the common thing we're not doing is that if you don't know how to preach and raise money, you have no invitation. A time came I decided every invitation I back come and raise money. No way. After all these things, what next? You make my life so beautiful. And as you are, you have you are made, made me here on earth. It's an anthem I'm hearing. There's nothing greater than this. Shakato Baladagaya. That's why I love will test your heart on things and it is this test of materialism that he will know your what are you buyable are you bribable a man could be sellable but he's buyable too but in the purchase that jesus made he purchased us with something that cannot be put can be repurchased by anything so when he wants to do a transaction of soul with you that he wants you to raise a tribe 
you might not be so a perfect man but there are components of God that he wants to deposit in your clan that you will raise the second thing is the test of materialism now that you are a landlady now that you are a landlord how do you answer the greeting of the gate man at your house you know we act humble you know we practice and somebody will say i'm very humble we act humble talking to a big man like you and you're talking gentle does not define you humble what makes you humble is the way you approach your housemaid how do you just return when you are in the kitchen or you load it over her jesus was speaking the other day he said anyone that will be great amongst you will be the servant of the others materialism you know when we talk materialism somebody will think it's money alone part of materialism is power because there is a prophetic shift this thing started three four years ago i captured that vision last two years where the lord was making a wealth transfer money will leave the hand of unbelievers into the hand of believers tongue talking believers because we are at the last shift of the journey so there is need for us to have an aggressive evangelism this is why the lord is blessing you he's not blessing you for you to go to your village and take titles the essence of the money you are having is not for you to go and start you know answering the greatest of all time in acquiring things the essence of bringing this wealth out of the hands of unbelievers into your hand is so that you can partner with him to do the gospel because the most expensive thing now is the gospel so if what you have what the lord has placed in your hand is not prioritized to so winning it means that you have failed the test of materialism because everything that he's bringing into your position he made you a director because he wants to i showed you yesterday how god wears people as clothes so if he made you a director it means that he wants to be in that industry you study the education and you are angry now i am angry yes they didn't give me mercy you did education you thought it was an accident you didn't know that god was orchestrating you because there's lack of moral thinking among the people that are producing a curriculum A conference I did where we gathered all the teachers at Puchen Nawokolo. Lucky, you should remember. We gathered all the teachers, all the school owners, brought some directors from the government and we, some pastors too. We had that meeting. I think that was six or seven, okay, five years ago. That was where a woman unveiled something that happens in a school in Asaba here. Your child does not know what condom is. Yeah, there's a school in this city that gives children condom for experiment. So imagine you are the next minister of education imagine that you are one of those people that make decision of what happens in our education system would, would this strike have lasted for eight months that is the reason why god wants us to occupy the seven months of influence Because there are three types of people that God called. The Joseph, the Elijah, and the Daniel. The Josephs, they are the fruit. But the seed is in them. The seed, like Abraham, is the call of God. The fruit is their profession. So you look at them, you call him a doctor. You didn't know that he's a man that is sent to heal people that have sicknesses. So he wears the coat of a doctor, says that you're looking at him. The 
last test that will be given to a man through whose loins nations will come out from is the test of your heart structure God does not deal with men according to their actions God deals with men according to their intentions Father to child, spirit to spirit, line led by your word. With your breath of life, that's why I took my life. Shakata, that's why I changed my world. Ah. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Ah, Shakata Bagadaya. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Let's say, let's say, let's say. was given to him about his heart condition is found in the book of Genesis chapter 14. Show us less on my eyes, please. Genesis chapter 14. Oh dear Lord. Yes. From verse 11. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their virtues and went their way. Verse 12. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goose and departed. Uh huh. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Maram the Amorite, brother of Isco and brother of Anam. And these were and these were confederate with Abraham. Yes. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. If you are following us on the radio, we have done justice to this matter. The problem of Lot. That, that one. Maybe at the minister's section tomorrow because we're having a general minister's section with a will. After the general section, he will meet with all the pastors and uh, some partners we have. And What's the difference between the model of Abraham and the model of Lot? I'll show you. Let me talk about the test before I talk about the model. First, God had to test Abraham. He said, I want to do business with you and you viewed it yourself. He said, yes, you've passed the first test. Though he failed the test of hunger, he lied. He went to Egypt and he lied. Now, the second test he gave to him was the test of materialism. He passed that one. The third test. Abraham, your brother Lot, the one that humiliated you, who did not consider your age and stature, who did not look at your possession as a father, but insulted you by choosing before you have been captivated go and rescue him i want to do business with you go and rescue him the test of your heart structure so okay finally look at what Abraham did the Bible said that one person escaped and informed Abraham that his brother was taken captive and God was watching
I want to raise a breed. Not a breed of bitter people that can pray. A breed of people that can speak in tongues for 40 hours. But their heart is black. I don't know that. I don't know that. Abraham stood up. The first thing he did was not to count the error of Lot. His brother is taken. The same way in the ministry. You heard that a co-minister fell into something. What did you do to save him? Instead, you started blowing it around. Because you are in competition with him. I hope you know that that man later became a homosexual. Yes. Mm. Yes. He became a homosexual. And everybody deserted him. It was men he raised. The people he raised. That is the reason why I know that all of you seated here listening to me are senior people in faith. But I have a question. What are you raising? Children. We were the first people that started this calling of phone number in our back when we started and it was not magic. Our greatest goal that time in ministry, 2009, 2008, was when we come to program, what, how many people will fall, how many people do we talk to, how many people do we, do? we there was no consciousness of discipleship. Okay, so when we started that, we we'll come and somebody will wake you up and say, your name is Ebuka, your number is, call it. A, a team or fellowship or church or ministry builded on prophecy. I'm very sorry to say, I don't mean to insult your calling, sir. Without a solid discipleship program, what you're raising now is children, babies. Any day they hear that you fornicated or any day they heard that you, you did business with somebody, they did hear the story full and somebody, the person will just come and tell them you earned their money. Fake pastor. Everybody will clear. You'll be left alone. Because no man takes children to war. You take men to war. Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? So, now, this brother, what happened to him was, the Bible now said that this Abraham, immediately he had, he took his trained the Bible called them servants. Another translation said, trained men. 318 trained men. He took. Abraham was rich. Lot was rich. Abraham had men. Lot had men. The difference was in their dealing. Abraham will inculcate morals. Train them. Prepare them and arm them. And alas, Lot had a business. He taught nobody the secrets. So on the day of battle, he was taken captive, including his men. His men left him. Now, in the midst of all this chaos, the test to Abraham was his heart structure. The lesson to Lot was to learn the lesson of raising men. So we come to our programs every day. We are preaching the whole messages we are preaching anywhere they're chasing you from the village you anybody that took your name anywhere will die those we pray those kind of prayer but it shouldn't be our priority have you taught these people the pre the basics of faith first of all they will have to learn that the person you are is man of god not god of man The man had 
they've taken him. He didn't want to start remembering how the boy insulted him, how he neglected him, how he chose before him. This man fell into homosexuality. And in that midst of homosexuality, it was 12 men that he raised. That stood, they said, no. If the whole world said that this man is not a man of God, to us he is. To us he is. Paul was speaking, he said, if I be not apostle to others, to you, you are the proof of my apostleship. I hear the song, Messiah is the king of kings. Messiah is the Lord of lords. Messiah is the king of kings. Messiah, 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 together they didn't want to talk about it they were aware but they didn't discuss it they held their hands together if you spend your energy as a minister raising children the day of battle you will have no backup they can only sit down and cry they cry they will say that guy was anointed that guy was powerful what has happened to him? Oh, Asaba. Asaba swallows ministers. That's the only cry. Because no matter how caring a child is towards his parents, he cannot fight an enemy so far as he remains a child. This man returned back to faith because 12 sons held their ground, prayed and was following him up. It is easy for a man to chase a woman. If they accuse a brother that he had a sex with a woman, I will understand it could be natural. But homosexuality is beyond discussion. It's a force. Satan came for him. And if you go and read the books he produced, God's general, you can't finish reading those books, all the edition, and your heart will not shift towards looking for God. So Satan was angry. How can you bring this kind of weapon to a generation? You have brought the weapon, come and end well, let's see. So, you went for him. The essence of having people around you is not to keep answering daddy, 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 mommy, 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 mommy. Raise them. A battle will come. They will tell you, go inside. Let's stay at the gate and face this enemy. You want to have an example of what I'm saying? Something terrible that should have finished heated that ministry. But you cannot meet a member and ask him of his pastor why he will fight you. The first thing he will tell you is first, my pastor is a man of God. Once he tells you that name, forget it. Forget it. But let any prophet have that experience. That everything you're doing. You, you, all your prophecy is accurate oh. the phone number you're calling is accurate but you will get to know that prophecy does not build people what builds people now the, what builds people is the word of God so the test was to Abraham to test his heart structure Abraham I want to make a nation out of you your brother is taken go and rescue him if Abraham did not hear about the captivity of Lot it have been different. This one, the Lord permitted him to hear. People have eaten your money and done all sort of terrible things to you. That girl slept with your husband. No. 
now you hear that the child the, the child of that girl is dying and she doesn't have any money to take care of the girl what are you doing in a revival book that I was reading I saw the story of a woman uh, some soldiers came into the house of the woman in a country where the gospel is forbidden and they killed the man killed all the children of the man left the woman the woman remained in pain remained in trauma all through her life one day a boy knocked and came to the woman and started discussing with this woman saying all sorts of things but at the end of the day something happened when they were done discussing the man now opened up he said you remember the day your husband and everybody died the woman said how can i forget such a experience after i killed your husband killed your children and left here that day a few weeks later i started thinking what is it that happened to you that you refuse to denounce that took these people and you don't mind i want to believe in it so the killer repented went to the woman and reported i was the one that killed everybody in your house because of the faith cannot what interests me was that the woman is not because that she cried immediately he had but now i am i'm saved the woman ran off from where she was sitting and embraced him after you killed my husband but some of you in your community what you're dragging is a half piece of land he took our land he took our land he insulted my father he spit his part on my mother he took he called my mother he called everything everything and god is saying who will tell this woman that i want to make a nation out of her but i cannot do it with the spirit of unforgiveness to abraham his heart must be tested you lift your hands and see all prophecy i'm not moved by what you see because even Satan sees. I told you yesterday that the day they chased Satan from heaven, they didn't blindfold his eyes. He sees. Been here before time began, yeah, you still know my name. You existed through eternity, yeah, you still know my name. Elohim. Elohim. let me summarize with this if you are not brooding on any space called people start it today You've been a Christian for the past five years. Who has you begotten? Who have you begotten in faith? Thank God for and uh, respectfully speaking, God forgive us. I think we have missed the basics of what faith looks like. Let me also talk to our mothers here. Study the scripture very well. When Rebecca, Sarah, Le Leah, and Rachel were going to their husband's house they went with somebody who are you brooding on man who are you raising all these brothers that are still single who will they marry somebody paid the price of raising you as a godly daughter and what you're doing now anyway is your business now this is on a generation i tire for now if that was what how they handled you you will not be who you are today so there is need god is calling on all of us you me all of us should go back some of the times my staff and my team will come back is who we'll, we'll call it a vigil what we came to do is to read a book read all through the night the next night will come again and so because what we want to make is not powerful preachers we want people that will herald 
discipleship, solid and authentic Christianity. That's what we're raising. So we pray, we start analyzing the scriptures. Now, start analyzing the scriptures. The Bible said he called them that they may be with him so that he will send them to go and preach. But what we have today is we have people that gave their life to Christ last month. The next thing, they are powerful preachers. Their posters are everywhere. I want to promise you, I'm not cursing you. You will fail if that's your faith. Go back to the class of discipleship and be tutored. Because there are six major steps. If you miss any of them, your faith will clash. The making of a man is the purpose designing of an individual. The making of a nation is when God wants to take the city. Imagine if all of us become radicalized for Jesus, living according to his details and all the rest of them. We'll change this as ever. Let's be on our feet. Lift your hands and thank him for this morning. What did you hear? What area are you affected? Talk to the Lord. I am grateful. Oh. You exist true Jesus.